This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this simple circular arrow infographic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and we'll get started here in Inkscape. Uh, and by the way, if you'd like to make Inkscape appear the way you see here on my screen with the dark theme and the custom icons, I'll have that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the view is set to custom. And then we're going to zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up the align and distribute menu. And we're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down. And then we're going to go to the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu and open that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle. So let's come over to this uh, circles and ellipses tool. And I'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create uh, a big circle like that. And um, I'm going to take the opacity and drop that down in half. And then I'll go back to the select tool. And I'm going to right click the circle and go to duplicate. And I'll turn that red. And then I'll hold control and shift and I'm going to grab this arrow down here on the bottom right and just click and drag to scale this in about that much. That's a pretty good thickness right there. And then I'll hold shift and click on the black circle and go to path difference. Okay, so we have the circle for our infographic. The next step is to create these little line breaks uh, with the uh, arrow as you see here. So in order to do that, we're going to create a rectangle. So let's come over here to the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to click and drag and go over, create a rectangle going over the top right there like that, maybe about that wide. You just try to eyeball it. And that's pretty good thickness right there. And then I'm going to go to the select tool. I'll right click this, go to duplicate, turn that green. And then I'm going to hold shift and alt and click on that green rectangle. And what that's going to do is that's going to select both of these objects right here at the same time. So let me do that again. I'll click on that. I'll hold shift and alt and click on the red one so we have them both selected. And I'm going to click, I'm going to come over here to the uh, align panel and click on this button right here that says align top edges uh, of objects to the bottom edge of the anchor. And that's just going to stack that on top of it right there. And then I'm going to group that together. Uh, this button right here, group selected objects. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on our little ring graphic here. And I'm going to center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then click off of it to deselect everything. Now let's click on these two little lines right here that we just created and we're going to ungroup them and then click off of it to deselect and we'll take this green object and we'll just delete that. Press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We're done with that. And then we're going to click on this, this red rectangle and then we're going to click on it a second time to get our rotation handles and when we do that we're going to get this little crosshair here in the center. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab this crosshair and just click and drag it straight down to the bottom until it snaps to the bottom of the red rectangle right there like that. Then I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and take this top arrow right here and you'll see we'll be able to move this thing around according to its center point. So I'm going to put it right here at the top and I'm going to press the space bar. We're holding control the entire time we do this. I'm going to press the space bar and then I'm going to rotate this around to about here. Maybe about there. Press the space bar again and then bring this one around to here. We're holding control the whole time we're doing this. And right there, I'll just let go of everything and leave that one right there. And then I'm going to hold shift, click on this red shape, and then this red shape. So we have all three of the red shapes selected. And we can go to path, union. And we could hold shift on the keyboard and click on the black ring in the background and go to path, difference. So we now have the shape, but what we have to do now is we have to put the indents in those spaces uh, to make it appear like it's an arrow. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to rotate this thing around so that this gap right here is sitting up, is, is sitting horizontally. So I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab this top right arrow and just click and drag this down. One, two. So for two steps that got that, it got that line horizontal. That's what we want. We want this line to be horizontal like this so we can edit it and put that indent in there. And the way, we're, the way that we're going to do that is we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. And I'm looking at these nodes right here, these four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to click and drag with the mouse over those four nodes, just like that. And I'm going to come up here to the very far left to the button that says insert new nodes into selected segments. I'll click on that and it's going to put two new nodes in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over those two nodes that we just created. So just those are selected and I'm going to press up on the keyboard a few times to move those nodes up. So. Um, <clears throat> 
you'll want to pay attention to how many times you press up on the keyboard because we're going to do this again to these other two gaps. So I'm going to press up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15. All right, so I, I moved that up 15 spaces like that. And we're going to go ahead and do this to the rest of these. So let's go back to the select tool. Uh, we'll click on this again to get back to our rotation handles. And we're going to rotate this thing around until this gap is sitting horizontally. So hold control, grab this arrow, rotate it around. Now that's sitting horizontal like that. And again, we'll go back to the edit paths by nodes tool. Click and drag over these four nodes. Click on the button that says insert uh, new nodes into selected segments. And click and drag over those two nodes that we just created and we're going to move that up 15 spaces. So I press up on the keyboard, uh, the up key 15 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we're going to do this one more time. So let's come back to the select tool. Click on this again to get the rotation handles. Hold control, grab this arrow and rotate it around until that gap is sitting horizontally. Come back to the, uh, the edit pads by nodes tool. Click and drag over those right there. Insert new nodes, click and drag over these two nodes right here, and again, 15 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then we can go back to the select tool, and we can click on this again to get back to our uh, rotation handles, and we can rotate this thing back around so it's sitting upright again like when we started. So let me just hold control and just rotate this around like that. And that's pretty good. We could bring the opacity all the way up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a backdrop behind this thing. If you notice here on the thumbnail, I have like a grayish, whitish backdrop going behind it because one of these segments I'm going to use as white. So let's come over to the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'm just going to create a rectangle over that, uh, over our little graphic right there like that. We'll go to the select tool. We'll lower this to the bottom with the button that says lower selection to the bottom. And I'll hold shift and click on the uh, graphic right there. And we're just going to make sure that's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off it to deselect. So let's take just this green, this green backdrop right here. And we're, I'm going to make this a shade of gray, maybe 20% gray. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll use 20% gray. And I'm going to give this a radial gradient under the uh, Fill and Stroke tab and under the Fill tab. I'll click on the button that says Radial Gradient. And uh, I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool, and it's going to show us these stops here. So let's click on this stop right here, and we'll bring the opacity all the way up. And then I'm going to double click on this line right here to put a new stop in there. And I'm going to take that stop, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to come over here under the Fill tab, and under the HSL tab, I'll come down to the L column and slide that all the way to the right to make that white. And I'll do the same thing to this stop. I'll click on this stop, slide the L column to the right to make that white. And maybe I'll bring this line and I'll bring this stop in a little bit so it isn't so um, abrupt. With it out all the way out here, you can kind of see like a, a little bit of banding in the gradient. We don't want that. We want this to be smooth, a smooth, fluid gradient. That's pretty good. So we'll go back to the select tool. Let's now work on our infographic here. We'll click on this and we're going to break this apart into three separate pieces. As you see here, it's all one object. But um, what we could do is we can go to path break apart and it broke that up into three separate pieces. Let me click off of that to deselect. So you can see we now have three different pieces here that we can edit however we'd like. So the color that I used here, I used an orangish red for this one right here. So let's click off of that to deselect everything and just click on this top left one right here. And I'm going to make this, uh, um, I'm going to start out with red, but I'm going to make it like an orangish red, maybe that, that's pretty good. And this one right here will be white. And this one right here, I believe I used a very dark, a, a dark bluish gray. So I'll come down here to the color picker and I'm going to give that that dark shade of blue and I'll come up to the S column and just bring that over a little bit to the left to make that a little more gray. And that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is let me click off of it to deselect everything. If you notice here, this white one kind of blends in with the background. And I'm gonna get. I'm gonna fix that by putting a um, a long shadow behind. It. Like you see here, you notice like this little long shadow. To do that, I'm gonna hold Shift and click on each of these three segments, and then I'll right click that and go to Duplicate, go to Path, Union, and let me come back down here to the Color Picker and make this black. And I'm going to go to Extension, 
generate from path and motion and what we're gonna do here I'm gonna have the magnitude set to 800 and the angle set to 45 degrees and let me press live preview to show you what that does it kinda of took that out it kinda of took that and stretched it out at a 45 degree angle and it went at a magnitude of 800 um, pixels or whatever unit of measurement that is so once that's set like that I'll go ahead and click apply and then close out and you'll see we have our little uh, what's going to be our drop shadow so let me lower that uh, to the bottom lower selection to the bottom and then I'll raise it up one step raise selection one step go ahead and click that button so it goes beneath it goes above the backdrop and I'm gonna take the opacity of this and bring this down about that much and if you notice now you can see the white you can see the white segment there let me if I get rid of that it disappears again but since that's there we can kind of see it so um, once we've done that let's click on our backdrop right click that and go to duplicate hold shift click on the long shadow that we just created and go to object clip set so it took it and put it within those boundaries so uh, let's click off of that to deselect and the next thing we could do here is we could just fill this in with some information as you notice here I put one two three so uh, let me grab the text tool and create some text I'm just gonna click on the canvas to get the cursor I'm just gonna write zero one and the font I'm going to use is called Lato or Lato or however that's pronounced I'll use the medium weight click apply close out of that and go back to the select tool and I'm gonna put this right here I'll turn that white and I'm just gonna hold control and shift and scale that down a little bit so it's not so big that's pretty good and I'll right click this and go to duplicate and I'll put this one over here in the white segment but I'm gonna make this one the same color that this one is so we can see it so let me press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper and if that doesn't work you could also click on the dropper tool which is over here if you're using a laptop these icons probably won't be here there'll be a little arrow down here if you click on that you'll get a little pop-up menu to get the dropper so or, or you can just press F7 the keyboard shortcut like I have and once you have the dropper you just click and drag over that segment to make it that color that's pretty good and we'll go to the go back to the text tool so we can edit that make that two and I'll go back to the select tool I'll, uh, I'll click on this one right click duplicate put this over here go back to the text tool and I'm going to make that number three I'll go back to the select tool put that right there and just for the sake of this tutorial I kind of put some social media icons there I, I, I think I think the design looks good when you have some kind of icons there so I just grabbed these social media icons so I'm just gonna import my uh, social media icons file um, I wrote a blog post a while back uh, where I, I gave a file of all the social media icons I have I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description in case you'd like to download them they're really useful when you're doing design work so uh, I'm gonna go to file import and um, social media icons SVG there it is I'll double click that to import it and there's our vector social media icons so let me ungroup them and again you could download this file by going to the link in the description I'll have that information for you there and I'll click off of that to deselect and what did I use here I believe I used Pinterest for that one and Google Plus and then Periscope so let me grab the, uh, the, the Pinterest icon I'll put this up here I'll make that white I'll just hold control and scale that down a little bit like that and for this one what was this Google Plus I'll take the Google Plus icon put this right here hold control scale it down and I'll press F7 to get the dropper again so we can make it this shade and we'll go back to the select tool and finally I used periscope for that one so let me grab the periscope logo and put that right there we'll make that white hold control and scale that down and then finally we could just put some dummy text in here you notice here I, I, I posted I pasted some of that that lorem ipsum whatever that is I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize that I'll grab the text tool I'm gonna to start the text out right here I'm just gonna write this is some text let me bring the size of that down let me try a smaller size maybe like 14 that's pretty good I'll go back to the select tool let me put this over here and I'll make this white go back to the text tool and again I'm just gonna keep writing that over again this is some text this is some text this is a 
that's pretty good like that let me get let me get rid of that one right there and you could put whatever you want there that's where you could fill in the information or whatever you'd like I'm just gonna hold control and shift and scale that down a little more then I'll right click that and go to duplicate I'll put this over here and I'll right click this and go to duplicate and I'll put this over here but I'll press F7 to get the dropper so I can make this the same shade that is and go back to the select tool and let me get rid of all these I don't need these anymore and as you can see we're pretty much done there's a very simple infographic using Inkscape let me just make sure I didn't miss anything yeah that looks that looks about right so uh, that's how you can do that if you have any questions let me know and as always thank you for watching